So here's a really quick and rough video in response to a deck builder that was asking about whether his unique handrail design would count as a graspable handrail. So let's take a look at how we would find that answer. You know, rather than give a man a fish, I'd rather teach him how to fish. So here we are in the 2015 IRC section 311.7.85 for grip size. <clears throat> and we are provided two prescriptive methods to, for very easy verification um, that a handrail is considered graspable. Now do bear in mind this charging statement st states it can be one of these two types or provide equivalent graspability. So that's giving uh, some authority to an inspector to determine that even though a handrail may not exactly meet these criterias, if it provides an equivalent graspability as shown here, then it's acceptable. So let's look at the first criteria and we'll start with a simple one. This is type one. Handrails with a circular cross section shall have an outside diameter of not less than an inch and a quarter and not greater than two inches. If the handrail is not circle, circular, it shall have a perimeter of not less than four inches and not greater than six and a quarter inches. So here is the design, very rough sketch in question, which is this simple mahogany two and a half by inch and a half piece of material on top of it, inch and a half by inch and a half uh, support below. So right now we know this is not circular. So we're not considering this first part of this section here that says uh, with a circular cross section. So we have to move to the next part that says if the handrail is not circular, it shall have a perimeter of not less than four inches and not more than six and a quarter. So going back here and looking at our photo here, our little sketch, excuse me, I've added in all these perimeter distances here, 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 and here. You come out to this little equation and we see that we're a six and a half inch perimeter. So we have exceeded the maximum six and a quarter inch perimeter. And that right there is gonna kick us out of this type one grip size that we find right here. But we can also go on just for the sake of education that it also cannot have a cross section of more than two and a quarter inches. So the cross section of the handrail portion I've kind of detailed right here in this picture. Here would be your cross section, the, the number C I put here as a variable. Now, if you guys remember Pythagorean's theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, we can translate that around to be C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. This is how we figure out what this cross section is. So we use B and A, A is this uh, inch and a half. We come over here and plug those into this equation, take the square roots, add them together, and then, or take the squares, add them together, take the square root, and we see we're 2.92 inches, almost three inches in cross section. So that's another means where even if we were less than that, that total uh, right here, six and a quarter inches, we were six and a half inches in this example. But had we still been six and a quarter, we probably would have been beyond this maximum two and a quarter inches cross section. So right now we know that this part here is not gonna work for this unique handrail. We've gotta move down to the type two handrail. And I'm gonna put that in the next video. Okay, so continuing. We've determined that this design handrail does not meet the type one provided in the IRC because it has a six and a half inch perimeter which exceeds the maximum allowable six and a quarter and it has a cross section of almost three inches, which exceeds the maximum two and a quarter inch cross section. So we've got to move down to this next section, the type two handrail. And boy, here is where things get complicated. So let's start just doing this piece by piece. Handrails with a perimeter greater than six and a quarter, that's what we have, shall have a graspable finger recess on both sides of the profile. This is so that you can curl your hands around the handrail and actually get a grip on it as opposed to a pinch. I don't know how to better describe that, but imagine trying to hang from the bottom side of joists underneath a deck. You'd only be able to pinch the sides of those joists. Whereas if you could get your hand and kind of wrap it around like a gymnast bar, a monkey bar, a pull-up bar, you can actually grip it with your fingers. That's the best I can describe. Grip over pinch is what we're working for. And that's why we need the finger recess. 
So it says this, the finger recess shall begin within three quarters of an inch measured vertically from the tallest portion of the profile. So if we come up to here, our little drawings in this very rough video, and we turn the page, here's where I'm kind of showing you what we have a finger recess. So this design already is, is off to a good start with a finger recess. However, that finger recess says that it has to start within three quarters of an inch vertically from the tallest point of the handrail. This handrail was an inch and a half tall, and we can see that that finger recess here would not be within that distance. So you see these dashed lines, we're immediately gonna have to come in and trim this handrail off. Now that won't be a 45 degree angle based on the design I've been given here, because we'd be three quarters an inch from the top, which is three quarters from the bottom, and only a half inch of, um, a half inch of, uh, uh, extension, if you will, on the two sides, finger recess. We have a half inch of that. So that's the first step. Then we'll move on and we'll read the rest of this. It says that, uh, let's see, the tallest from a depth of, here we go, begin vertically, uh, measured vertically from the tallest portion of the profile and have a depth of not less than five sixteenths of an inch within seven eighths of an inch below the widest portion of the profile. So the depth of the finger recess is how deep we can, we can recess our fingers, okay? And we're looking at just over a quarter of an inch. And that has to occur within seven eighths of an inch from the widest portion of this handrail profile. So let's go back up here again and flip the page. Okay, so here we go. Here we have the widest portion of this profile right here. And we have a half inch recess from this point to where this other piece of material is supported. So our recess is greater than the 5 sixteenths. This is the minimum required, the 5 sixteenths. And this 5 sixteenths has to be reached within 7 eighths of an inch from the widest portion. So from here down to this point, we were 3 quarters of an inch. And at that point, we're already a half inch in. So we know that by the time we get all the way to 7 eighths, we're clearly within our 5 sixteenths recess. So yay, we made it through that part. All right, continuing on. Now we're going to keep reading. This required depth shall continue for not less than 3 eighths of an inch to a level that is not less than 1 and 3 quarter inches below the tallest portion of the profile. Keep up with me here. So we're going back to this picture. Now we're going to go down to a new little sketch I made for you. This is back to our tallest portion here. So the level where 5 sixteenths of recess is reached, you know, about halfway through. Because remember, we've got about a half inch of recess here. And so we've reached, we've reached that minimum 5 sixteenths depth somewhere around here. Now that depth needs to continue for at least three eighths of an inch, which it does, right? It continues for essentially affinity. However, that also has to continue to a point not less than one and three quarter inch from the tallest portion coming down like this. So for example, if there was some sort of bump or something here that came out, it would not meet this inch and three quarter. But we don't have this little the bump so we have at least the 3 8 inch depth of the 5 16th recess, and that depth of the 5 16th continues well beyond the inch and three quarter minimum from the tallest portion. Okay, we're making headway. Let's continue. Almost done. <clears throat> now it also says the width of the handrail above the recess shall be not less than one and a quarter inches and not more than two and three quarter inches. So if we come back here, flip the page again, here we see the width above the recess. And the design I was given was that it was a two and a half inch piece of mahogany up top here. So that width is not less than the one and a quarter minimum, and it's not more than two and three quarters. So we made it. We're also clear on that portion. And now if we come down, I gotta pull my desk out a little further. We gotta go to the very last part that says, edges shall have a radius of not less than 0 0.01 inches. All right, don't get your tape measure out for that. Here's really easy. Go get your orbital sander or whatever sander you use. 
sand this little corner, sand this corner, sand that corner after you make your cut, sand this little corner after you make your cut. Make sure they're just rounded soft edges. Hopefully a reasonably decent deck builder would already put a little sanding on his, on his handrail and keep it comfortable for his clients. So there we have it. This handrail design with an inch and a half by two and a half inch piece of mahogany on top of an inch and a half wide uh, support below. All that needs to be done is within three quarters down, cut this back and three quarters down, cut this back, sand your corners, and you have a code compliant type two handrail. Now, remember, it's about graspability, and the code is not meant to just give you one way or the highway. This is America. We have freedom. We like to do creative designs. So for inspectors, always remember, the code gives you this ability to have some, some decent thought in this and say, provide equivalent graspability. And that's where I want everyone to think about not pinching, but grasping. And it really can be that simple. I hope this helps you guys because you can't, uh, you can't rely on everyone else to give you the answers. You can't rely on your inspector to tell you what to do. Everyone needs to be able to go to the code, the book we all have to abide by, and be able to analyze and figure this out. And I'm not going to lie. That part right there is ridiculously complicated. Have a great day. And good luck in your construction.